Welcome back, this is Yama Jack, and today we got Gunslinger Ashford Asylum Suicidal. First batch of Zeds heading your way. Get ready to this whole three episode a day thing. Great. It's uh, strange. I don't mind it. Three episodes a day isn't that much work. And uh, and what I get out of it will, will definitely outweigh the negatives of the extra work that I do every day. And, you know, eventually I get to the point where I don't have to record three episodes a day. I already have enough of a backlog to feel satisfied with what I'm doing. Um, which eventually, like, uh, once I start moving on to the boat, but that's like a, a ways away. But once I do, you know, then we, uh, we're going to need, like, quite a bit of a backlog. Uh, so whenever I end up figuring out, like, what time I'm going to be moving on to the boat... Again, it's not for quite a while. I have to like learn how to sail and like lose weight and get the orchiectomy done and recover from it and then like get experience sailing and like you know probably not gonna want to do that realistically until like COVID's a little bit less of a problem and there's just a billion issues kind of compounding on each other. That uh you know. Kind of get in the way of moving on to the boat, but eventually I'm going to, and once I do, I'm going to want to have probably two or three months of, of, uh, of a backlog for sure. But that just means that, you know, if I get a month of a backlog now, um, you know, if I end up doing three episodes a day, every day, for two months, and I have a, a full month backlog, um, you know, then, then, uh, it's, it's simple for me to just do an extra four months or whatever of three episodes a day while I'm preparing to move on to the boat and all that and then bippity boppity there you go right so it's kind of nice it's a long-term project this whole uh, three episodes a day to, to build up an enormous backlog to prevent me from having to do things I'm not gonna have like a super long backlog though I'm thinking maybe a week at the moment I don't like there the there's issues with backlogs right like when you have a whole bunch of uh, of uh, a video is just kind of waiting to go up like there's issues with that because uh, you guys the viewers the the watchers the commenters the the likers the people who who make this uh, well more fun for me anyway uh, you know you guys uh, end up getting a little bit outdated because uh, the, the, the backlog's so long you know, if somebody leaves a comment saying something and I want to talk about it in an episode or something like that and the backlog is three months long, well, you're not getting the response for, like, three months, you know? That's no fun. So for right now, I'm thinking I'm just going to do a week, which I, I think uh, is is a good idea because it'll, it'll help me be more consistent with my scheduling, uh, which will be good. Um, and I think that outweighs the having to wait a week for a response, personally. The, uh, the consistency should should uh, should outweigh that, in my opinion. One way or the other, I'm going to do it because it'll make me feel better about it. Whether it makes you feel better about it or not is another story. Ultimately, a less important one <laughs> to me. You know, it's uh, you got to be selfish. Come on, dude. Come on. Okay. You're not you're not exploding on me. No, 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 no. Okay. She shoots, she My goodness, dude. It was brutal. It was brutal. There's one flesh pound that will not be coming back. So yeah, I think I think a week is gonna do just fine. Um, and then you know whenever I move on to boat, then it'll be longer. But again, that's not for like probably realistically like more than a year. Like probably even more than two years. Um. There'll probably come a time where I'm going to be away for, like, some time. And I'll have to put together a backlog, like, on short notice. And I'll be recording a lot of episodes. Uh, you know, probably, like, in the next year, I'll probably end up doing some... some. Uh, I'll probably end up crewing on a boat. And uh, maybe do a, a longer voyage. Uh, possibly cross an ocean or something. I don't know. Like, like in the next year or two, I'm, I'm thinking I'd like to. Like, anything that I'm going to do when I'm living on my boat, pretty much I want to do it before I start living on my boat. You know what I mean? 
I don't, I don't want to like my first ocean voyage to be a solo voyage. <laughs> well, I'm not gonna solo voyage. On, I'm not. I'm not gonna single hand it on the ocean anyway. Um, it's mostly a comfort thing. It's not a safety thing. It's a comfort thing. Um, you're actually reasonably safe even single handed on a uh, on an ocean passing. Is actually reasonably safe. Like you're probably safer on uh, on the ocean than you are cruising around. Uh... You you you're probably safer sleeping on the ocean in a sailboat with nobody watching what's around than you are being awake on uh, on a coastline with with like a crew. Right? Like it, it's it's actually like really really safe to be on the ocean. The issue is that uh, you can only sleep for like you know an hour maybe maybe two hours maybe uh, at a time because you have to get up and you have to look around see if there's any boats see if uh, you know you're off course see if you know this or that is happening and then uh, and then go back to sleep so it's like every hour you're getting up spending you know five ten minutes just kind of checking everything making sure it's all okay and then going back to sleep and waking up an hour later and having to like continue to repeat this over and over again. It's very safe. You're not gonna like die. You're gonna make it across the ocean. It's it's just it's not gonna be a very comfortable experience. Um, so I wouldn't want a single-handed. Um, I I wouldn't want to cross the ocean by myself. I'd I'd want to have at least one other person there. Just just so that like instead of having to wake up every hour. I can just be like, okay, you're gonna watch tonight. Like we, we we can just like offset our sleep by like you know eight hours or whatever, seven hours or something, you know. And then I go to sleep for seven hours, they go to sleep for seven hours, and then we're both up for you know sometime, maybe six hours even. Um, and then we're both up, and you know just for the ocean crossing. Um, or you could do like four hour shifts throughout the night too. But uh, you know, being able to do like shifts instead is 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 so much more comfortable than having to get up constantly when you're when you're solo. Um, so that's that's why I would want to have somebody else with me. Ideally, even like two people with me. But uh, my goal is really only to have one person on the boat. So it's kind of like you know, well, how do you how do you make that work, right? Because now you got now you got to worry about you know, how the heck are you gonna do that? But. Uh, Cause I only really want to go around with uh, with with one person, you know. I want to go around with uh, just 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 me and 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 my, and uh, you know my partner. Maybe have some friends on from time to time or whatever. But anyway, uh, it's not even really like my my dream is isn't even to to be you know going back and forth across the oceans. So That's not really my kind of thing definitely gonna do it <laughs> it's, you know if you have a boat and you live on it and it's your primary residence or even like only residence as uh, as it'll be for me um, then uh, why, why wouldn't you you know like if you have somebody on there and you're both like comfortable with the idea of it and and you're both uh, you know you don't have any responsibilities on land you you can you can just go you have the money nothing's too wrong with it like why why wouldn't you from time to time right i feel like uh well there, 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 there's a couple of issues that i would have with um with it and uh, they mostly boil down to food honestly because like if you're in the middle of nowhere getting food is kind of hard and uh, even the food that you do get is like not good food, you know. And I don't mean good food. Like I need to be eating like a, you know, grade A wagyu steak every day. No, 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 no. Like just like food that's not you know infested with bugs, you know. Like good food in the sense that like this is food you can eat, not good food in the sense that this is food that's like, you know, yummy, you know. Just like this is food that is like actually safe to consume. Um, Food that is good at being food. <laughs> Not necessarily food that is good at being tasty. Just, just food that is good at being food. 
it's hard to get that in a lot of places so before I would go I'd have to like make sure that I'm set up for like a long time um, and like the more people you have on board the less time you can sail because you just have more mouths to feed um, so you have to like make another stop back sooner for um, food whereas if you have fewer people on board uh, you can like stretch the uh, the rations a little bit longer um, which is why that's that's what I would want to do if I'm gonna be doing that because that way I can like pick up some food here you know at grocery stores that I already frequent that I like that I respect that I I uh, you know use and uh, either this is a giant paper cut or something else in time took some hits there you know, stock up for months at a time even, and then just kind of be out there. You know, cross the ocean, kind of do some stuff, visit around, go back to another place that's like well civilized with proper grocery stores, pick up some more food and then come back or whatever, right? Or, or go to the next place or whatever. But I wouldn't want to like be picking up food somewhere where like, you know, there's a high chance that my bananas are going to be infested with like bugs and stuff because I don't really want to have to deal with bugs on a boat too much. You know, I'm, I'm like I'm like I'm okay with uh, with learning how to be like a diesel mechanic. I'm okay with learning how to like you know be a plumber. I'm okay with with like cleaning out the poop and the and the diesel and the and the and, the, and the, all this other kind of like gross stuff that you do on a boat. You know, swimming in the murky water to to like clean off the keel or like get crap out of the the props or whatever like that that stuff is like you know un unpleasant but uh something that i'm i'm personally pretty okay with dealing with and like bugs and stuff for you know i'm if it happens it's not gonna be like i'm just like well i guess i sell the boat you know not like i'll deal with it i just ideally i, I would i would rather just like you know do preventative care more than anything else just kind of prevent the bugs from getting there in the first place and that would be done through, you know, picking up food in, in, uh, more civilized areas. I, I mean civilized in the sense that they're like, there's more people, you know, like more populate, more populous. Um, like if you're out in the middle of nowhere and you're picking up, you know, fruits and veggies from some random village that's on the coast that, you know, happens to have a shop, like... You know, that's civilization. It's not really the kind of civilization that I want to buy my food from, personally. I just, uh... I don't like bugs, dude. You know, when when, when you buy, like, like, I go to the grocery store, I buy a head of lettuce. And it's like, that's a head of lettuce that has been cleaned and, like, processed and there's no bugs in it. When, when you go to... You know, somewhere in South Africa, or... If you're in uh, probably like Thailand, is Thailand landlocked? I don't think it is, right? Like they're 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 a coastal nation, right? I'm pretty sure uh, Vietnam or whatever. You know, you got uh, and, you're, and you're in the the, the 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 less populated areas anyway. You're, you're going to be seeing a lot of like farmers market kind of stuff and. These fruits and veggies are probably going to taste better if you get good ones. Um, to be honest with you, they, they, they probably taste great. But uh, you're also probably going to get like worms and, you know, stuff in your in your lettuce. And your apples are going to have holes in them and, you know, all, all this kind of stuff, right? So, just to me, I like, I like shopping at... Uh, well-established grocery stores. That's not really something you get to do all the time when you're sailing around the world, so... If I were to do that, I would, I would want to have a large enough boat to store enough food to last me to get to where I want to go, explore the area, and then get to somewhere else where I can buy food that I'm comfortable with buying. And if, you know, worst case comes to worst, then I have to buy food somewhere, then I just have to deal with it, right? But, you know. I'd, I'd I'd rather just not, if it's if it's possible, and it is, if I if I prepare for it. 
uh, properly. So, anyway, the, the moral of the story here is uh, I'll have to extend my my uh, backlog eventually, I suppose. Hmm, what were they I don't know. I'm excited to to get it to to get onto the boat, but I don't have a boat. I don't have the money to buy a boat. I don't have the experience necessary. I'm not fit enough to manage a boat. I don't have. It's not responsible for me to do that right now because I've got like surgeries coming up and. It's just there's, there's a plethora of problems involving uh, moving onto a boat right now, and uh, I don't really get to do it. So as excited as I am for it and. As much as I love this Annapolis book on seamanship, it, uh, it doesn't do me any good to be investing in it too much right now, you know? Because realistically, it's going to be like three or four years. I mean, I can sail until I'm like 50, 60 if I stay in shape, right? So if it takes me until I'm 32, 33, 34 to, to get a boat and move on to it and live on it, then that's what it takes. You know, like, so be it, right? Like, if you go watch these sailing channels, like, most of these people who are sailing around the world in, in, in sailboats, like, they're in their, like, 40s and, uh, and 50s and, like, or at least late 30s. And, uh, yeah. you know, they're still sailing. They're, they don't have any plans to stop anytime soon. As long as they stay in shape and, uh, healthy and stuff, then... I can continue sailing for a long time. If I get if I get onto a sailboat before I'm 40, then uh, then I, I get at least a decade, you know. So it's just a matter of saving up and, and making sure that I do it responsibly, which means that it's going to take a while. But and the other thing is, is these sailboats that you see on uh, on YouTube, like the SV Delos. Like if you if you look at sailing SV Delos. Like, they, they talk about how, like, inexpensive it is, but, like, the thing you don't get to see is how much does their sailboat cost. And their sailboat probably costs, like, six hundred, seven hundred thousand dollars $700,000. You know? Of course, you're not going to have to do much on it, because it's a brand new boat that they just bought. <laughs> you know, like, it wasn't even, probably wasn't even used. It was probably just a, well, I don't know. For, for a boat that size, it was probably used at six hundred, seven hundred thousand. Yeah, that's probably used. But, uh, you know, it's, like, very new and good condition when you get it. Then, of course, it's going to not have a lot of maintenance to do. Um, they, they also got, like, an enormous boat, though, is the other thing. So, like, you know, I'm, I'm going to be shopping for a fairly new boat as well. But I'm going to be looking for, like, 25 to 35 feet kind of kind of dealio, you know? So, <laughs> they, they have, like, 50-foot boat or something like that, which is, you know... I would love it if I if I could have it's like 53 feet I think so let's take a look uh, and if you guys don't know I'll show you um <laughs> I'm trying to find a picture because they um SV Delos this is why I, I stopped it SV Delos is a channel that uh Definitely, like, kind of hits that uh, you got like your 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 pretty naked ladies kind of thing. Um, which is, you know, I'm trying to find a good picture of it. Here we go. This one will do. So you got like this picture, right? Which is, uh, that's not the SV Delos anyway. Hold up. It's not even the SV Delos, man. Is it? It might be, actually. Uh, it might be. Here, this is, this is a better picture. Okay. So this, this is their sailboat, right? And, uh... From here to like here is like 53 feet, I believe. Like it's a very large boat, um, you know. Uh, how big is this V Delos? Yeah, it's 53 feet. Um, from 2000 
Um, yeah, they have enough room to comfortably sleep six people. <laughs> you know, like 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 this is an enormous boat. Um, it's a very very large boat, and uh, you know, I don't I don't need a boat that big. Is is the moral of the story? Is is kind of the bottom line. They get a lot of people out. They have like, uh, I mean, for a while they were they had like four people on it, like living on it full time. You know, like they had um, like a brother on, and then the brother's partner as well. Um, so it was it was four people living on the boat for for a long time. You know, like I might have people on occasionally. I don't intend to have other people like living on the boat traveling around the world with me, you know, like, that's not, that's not a part of my plan. <laughs> um, so a boat that large is, is just completely not necessary for me. Um, I, I'd be okay with maybe even, like, 28 feet. 25 is a little bit small, honestly. Um, 28 feet, 27 maybe would be, uh, would be okay. I mean, the smaller you go, the, the, the worse it'll be at, uh, like, ocean passing as well just because uh, the smaller it goes the but well, it'll still make it it's not it's not like it's gonna sink you know like that's not very likely you're not likely to you, you are you are very not likely to uh, capsize uh, a keelboat it's just as long as you're you're actually like maintaining the keel and making sure it's not gonna like break or, <laughs> or something you know uh, then it's gonna do its job and, and keep your boat mostly upright, you know, under, under even like extremely harsh conditions. Um, it's just not gonna be a very comfortable experience. Um, so 25 is a little bit small. 28 feet, 27 feet, probably uh, is pretty okay. And then the other thing is, is the smaller you go, like, kind of the thinner it gets too, um, which which means you get less living space, and uh, you know that's that's like. Those feet are coming off like your bed, <laughs> you know, it's coming off of your, you know, like you might think, well, 25 foot, 27 foot, like it's not that big of a difference. No, like that's, you know, the difference, that's like two feet longer on, on your bed, you know, like, and it's already a small bed, <laughs> you know, like, like it's, you know, you're not living a, a comfortable life there. So, uh, 27, 28 feet is, uh. Is, is probably what I'll end up getting. And then, you know, something like that from about the year 2000 um, in decent condition is probably going to run me about thirty to $80,000, right? Which is affordable, eventually. And then I'd have a boat that's in, like, similar condition to what the SV Dulles was when they got it, probably. Um, at the higher end of that, anyway. Um, just much, much smaller. And uh, smaller boats also have less maintenance to do because there's just, like less boat um you know you got yeah it's not it's not like a huge difference but if you have to like you know haul it out and like repaint it or something like that like you're just going to use less paint <laughs> you know like there's, there's just less boat otherwise oh my goodness uh otherwise you know you got the same engine the same motor the same you know all that stuff is just the same and it's just pushing less boat you know, so smaller boat, cheaper to maintain, for sure. Just not uh, not huge difference, you know, because like a lot of the cost is uh, in labor. Like even even if you're gonna be maintaining it yourself a lot of the time, it's uh, it, a lot of the cost is is in labor. Just like you're gonna have to pay somebody else to haul it out. You're gonna have to, you know, if you ever convert it to a river boat, which I might do. Um, I got friends who live in. Uh, like the middle of America, so I, I don't know. There's like the Erie Canal or whatever. I might turn it into a river boat then, um, and uh, kind of travel down the Erie Canal, um, which I believe is possible. I don't know. I haven't looked into it too much, but I, I believe it's possible. So I might do that. Um, if they're still living there by that time, like they were like, you should come down the Erie Canal when you get on your boat. I'm like, look. I'm on the west coast right now. The uh, the entrance there is to down the east coast. Okay. I'm not I'm not just like going around America. Like I'm going I'm taking the long route to get to the east coast of America. You know, like 
And it's gonna it's gonna be a, a ways, right? Like I have to first get the boat, and then uh, you know once once I have the boat, then I have to like sail around sort of the Pacific Northwest, the Pacific Northwest for a while, just to get comfortable with sailing on a boat and not have uh, as much risk. Um, and again, the, the the risk of like hitting something, like you're not you're never gonna you know. Like, what's what's the term for it? You never you're never gonna run your boat aground in the middle of the ocean because there's no ground to do that, you know. Under now, underneath. Um, so you know, like the your risk of destroying your boat is definitely higher when you're coastal, but um, your risk of being stranded in the middle of nowhere. Because uh, you know, I'm gonna cross the ocean. And I'm gonna go be coastal over there anyway, right? Like, the ocean crossing isn't going to be that dangerous. It's once I get over there, then if anything happens, which it's then likely to, I have no, I have nowhere to, to go. I have nowhere to, like, you know, I'm, I'm lost. I'm on my own. Uh, so, definitely safer to be here, where I'm, you know, already at. Uh, to kind of like get used to the boat and like its own quirks and how do I repair it and like what kinds of things I need to to fix and and uh, you know yada 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 right uh, yeah, we will do it right here um, yeah, run that way. got away man um, so you know anyway, anyway I have to like get the boat sail around Pacific Northwest for a while and then sail hello did this just show up is this always here um, and then finally end up getting to the Erie Canal I'm like look I'll, I'll do it if you're still like you know in the middle of America when uh, when I get to the east coast of America, then yeah, sure. But you're looking at like 10, 15 years here. Like it's not a, it's not a, you know, where I'm gonna be there, you know, in in six or seven months. Like it's, I'll be there in like 10 or 15 years. <laughs> you know, like if you're still there, then sure. But it's, it's gonna be a little while before that, uh, before I get there. So it'll. Uh... <laughs> but I don't know. Even even if they're not there, I might still travel. Erie Canal anyway, so it'd be generous. nice. Depends on the state of America. If uh, if America is still a little bit, you know. Sorry to my American viewers, but um, America is one of the l less safe countries to travel to as a foreigner to America. Um, you know, if you get injured or something like that, like you're kind of screwed. Whereas if I go to like somewhere in Canada where I live and I get injured then I'm gonna be okay if I go to like you know a lot of places and I get injured then I'm, I'm gonna be pretty okay and you, know, you get travelers insurance and all this kind of stuff or whatever but like America it's, it's a scarier place to be I'll, I'll put it that way so it'll depend on the state of it but I imagine like 15 years from now when I'm there like America will be fine it's not like it's like a terrible country. It's just uh, it's, it's got a, it's got a few quirks to work out. Anyway, it's gonna do it for today. So thanks for watching. Like the video if you like. Subscribe for more in the future. Comment if you have anything to say. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.